Hi, I'm Amy and my presentation is on the 2011 Heineken Cup final which was played in Cardiff. Throughout this presentation I will give an introduction to the event, an outline of the event, I will give a history and a background of the competition and the venue, I will talk through the bidding process, the background on the 2011 final, I will talk through six evaluation points which is economy and destination profile, legacy, commercial opportunities, tourism, spectator and visitor numbers and the bidding process. I will then assess and conclude my presentation. So the 2011 Heineken Cup final took place in the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff on the 21st of May 2011. It was between Leinster and Northampton Saints with Leinster being the eventual winners. The outline of the event, so the Heineken Cup was an annual European rugby competition which seen the best teams in England, France, Ireland, Italy, Scotland and Wales compete against each other. It consists of 24 teams. The finals were held in different cities and venues each year. The 2011 final held in Cardiff Millennium Stadium and this was the sixth final that had been held in Cardiff. So a history and background of the competition. Um, the competition was formed in 1995. It started as a 12-team tournament with just England, France, Ireland, Scotland and Wales taking part. It was then named the Heineken Cup after Heineken took on the sponsor. It was the, the first ever final took place in the old Cardiff Arms Park. In 2000 it became a 24-team tournament between six nations with Italy becoming part of the Six Nations meaning they then joined the European competition and the competition is played out in a number of pool stages which leads on to the quarter final, the semi final and then the final. So a history in the background of the venue. The Millennium Stadium opened in 1999 for the 1999 World Cup. It's a multi-purpose venue which can hold concerts conferences, rugby matches, football matches. It's home to the Welsh Rugby Union. It has hosted a, world, a number of worldwide sporting events and is the whole of the Champions League final this year. So the bidding process, the finals are open to all six of the shareholders, which are the English, the Welsh, the French, the Italian, the Irish and the Scottish unions. The unions then have to get back in from their government, um, the local civic and tourism authorities. So for Cardiff to hold it, they have to seek um, back in from the Welsh government, Cardiff City Council and Visit Wales. The unions then log the bid to the ERC which is the European Rugby Cup Union and then all unions had to be able to hold both the Heineken and the Amlin, Cal Amlin Challenge Cup finals so in this year the Millennium Stadium held the Heineken Cup final and the Cardiff City Stadium held the Amlin Challenge Cup final and then the decision can take up to a month before the whole city find out if they have won the bids so this was announced a year before they held the final in May 2010. So the background on the 2011 final was that it was the final was contested between Leinster and Northampton Saints and both teams had won the competition before. This final was held in a World Cup year with the 2011 Rugby World Cup taking place in through in September through to October and then Leinster, Leinster were crowned champions for the second time in two years with previously lifting the cap in 2009. So the evaluation points that I have chosen to talk through is the economy and the destination profile, the legacy, commercial opportunities, tourism, spectator and visitor numbers, and the bidding process. So, 
the economy and destination profile, I come up with four different questions to evaluate. So the first one was, did the Heineken Cup final boost the local economy of Cardiff? And I found out that the Heineken Cup actually brought £24 million to Cardiff in 2011. So is Cardiff a good destination to hold finals? For hosting the finals at the stadium, I think Cardiff, that the Millennium Stadium or Prince Party Stadium that it is now, is a good venue to hold finals with the infrastructure. The infrastructure and the roof and the stadium itself is a big talking point. For tourists, I don't think it's a good place to hold major events only because there's only around 4,500 rooms in Cardiff and this has proved a problem when for organisers for the Champions League final. So is there anything that needs to be improved for future events? I think the amount of accommodation that Cardiff got needs to be improved or accommodation in and around Cardiff or on the outskirts of Cardiff needs to be apt. And um, transport links in Cardiff, there's been a lot of controversy controversy around the Cardiff Central and the train links in and out of Cardiff in previous events, so I think that could be improved. Um, and then do businesses gain or lose from Cardiff hosting major events? So the benefits to holding large sporting events in Cardiff, um, I found out that the um, businesses Benefits can only last up to a number of weeks, but the hotels trains benefit as rooms pretty much sell up when there's a huge event in Cardiff. And it has an immediate and direct effect on boosting Cardiff's local economy. Um, the legacy. Um... Is there a lasting legacy on Cardiff since the Millennium Stadium was built? So the Millennium Stadium was built in 1999 and has been open for 18 years now. And as there was no legacy actually planned for the venue as it took, it didn't, wasn't much time in the planning process going through and it being built. But it has proved it can hold several events and it's become a successful business. So it's a big event in the city to hold sporting events, concerts. Um, and what, invest what investment has gone back into Cardiff? Um, I actually couldn't find any evidence of this. So the commercial opportunities. Um, has Cardiff benefited from commercially from holding these events. Um, there's no solid evidence on this, but Cardiff hosting major events has put Wales on the map, and especially Cardiff, with many people visiting Cardiff just to see the stadium. Um, how does Cardiff hosting highly commercialised events affect the city? Um, I've related this question to the Champions League final, this is a highly commercialised event that will disrupt all who lives and works in Cardiff. Um, through two massive security measures, nobody will be able to get within the boundaries of the stadium without a ticket or official accreditation. In other events, um, they usually close the roads, so they'll close like, the main roads around the stadium, which can see some disruption, but are just measures put in place to protect pedestrians that are going to the game. So tourism, um, has Wales seen an increase of tourism or is it just Cardiff? I think from the research I've done it's mostly Cardiff who benefit from hosting the major events with people coming back to Cardiff to see the stadium and the castle and the bay 
and they usually stay in and around Cardiff when they visit. So what tourist sites are most popular in Cardiff? So the Principality Stadium is one, the Millennium Centre, St Fagans, Cardiff Bay and Cardiff Castle were five of the main ones that came out when I researched this. So how much money do tourists contribute to the local economy here in Wales? Um, in 2014, it was around 4.2 billion for the whole of Wales, and more than 1 billion was spent in Cardiff and the Vale of Glamorgan alone. So, spectator and visitor numbers. So, do spectator numbers depend on the event being held? So, I think the spectators numbers do depend on the event. So, if there's like a rugby match or a concert of a big name star, um, these usually sell out where events like Speedway and Monster Jam do not. Um, how much money do spectators spend in the city? So, during the 2017 Six Nations, um, the city actually made £30 million revenue on spend with visitor spending for their tickets and their hotels and the money they just spend in the city. And then does crime increase when there is an event on in the city centre? So there's no actually official evidence of this for matches held at Principality Stadium. I could only find numbers on um, football matches held at Cardiff City. So the bidding process. Um, was introducing a bidding process beneficial for Cardiff? I think the bidding process did benefit Cardiff as they won due to capacity as they had a much bigger capacity than the Aviva Stadium in Dublin. So how has the bidding process been adapted for new competition? So in 2014 the last Heineken Cup final was held and it became the Champions Cup and the Challenge Cup and this bidding process for the new style competition now sees more nations actually considered and more stadiums considered than just the six that were continued previously were in the last competition. So in 2018, the final's actually been held in Spain, where it's never gone outside the Six Nations before. So an assessment of the event. So I think overall the Heineken Cup was good for Cardiff. It brought £24 million in. Um, it has had a positive impact on Cardiff with showing Cardiff can hold these large events and was probably one of the factors that helped it win the bid for the Champions League final. Um, Heineken has proved to be a strong brand with it continuing to sponsor the new structured event. Um, I do think the event needed restructuring to make the leagues more competitive and I feel if Cardiff want to hold more events they need to look in at the infrastructure of the roads and the transport networks as well as boosting hotel numbers. So to conclude I think major events have been good for Cardiff as a whole. Um, I don't think the travel networks are fit for purpose for holding that amount of numbers with there being a lot of complaints, especially during the 2015 Rugby World Cup. And because there's not enough hotel rooms in Cardiff, it does see a lot of people using the trains and the buses to get out of Cardiff to stay either in their accommodation or to get home. But despite all that, Cardiff still get chosen to hold major finals. Um, thank you for listening.